Thank you, Dr. Wang, for his uh, presentation. We must be shocked by the efficiency of our <laughs> emergency doctors. And, and shall we shame about the other world? Because the this difference in the patient's population and also the practice of the attendant of the emergency department. So we will proceed to our next presentation. So we will invite uh, Dr. Carson Mackinhan, uh, who is uh, right now the resident of the Port Royal Hospital and also a trainee of the emergency medicine. So please, Dr. Mack. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Carson Mack from Port Royal Hospital. I'm currently a year five resident. And I'll talk about the uh, Hong Kong aspect on this workflow and also working environment in our emergency department. So I'll start with some brief introduction of AME, uh, some of which uh, Clarence has talked about in his presentation. And I'll talk about the workflow and environment. And lastly, I'll uh, talk about some interesting statistics in Hong Kong as compared to those in Taiwan. So uh, this is a photo which I think all of our colleagues in Hong Kong a &E are familiar with. This actually shows that the 18 a and &E, uh, in Hong Kong and shows the current number of patients and also the average waiting time for our cat, free, uh, cat 4 and cat 5 patients. So sometimes when we're working so hard and so frustrated, we look at this <laughs> photo <laughs> uh, to find that other a &E colleagues are much more busier than us. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, current attendance of the a &E, and the last year, we have over 2 million people coming to the a &E. and uh, we can see that the population of Hong Kong is like 7.4 million. So assuming that each patient only see a &E once in a year, we are talking about uh, 29.5 population coming to the a &E, uh, which is less than Taiwan. And currently, we have 352 specialists uh, in the year 2017. And there are some new, new specialists just graduated a few days ago, ten so ten more, ten more right? <laughs> so there will be 362, and we are a growing department. So about the workflow and environment, I'll be showing some photos of the uh, emergency department that I'm currently working in, and that is the newest hospital in our uh, Hong Kong public sector, which is the Tin Shui Hospital. I'm, uh, I just knew that our Taiwan colleagues has visited the Prince of Wales Hospital a few days ago. So uh, I'll just go through the photos much quicker. So every patient coming by the ambulance or on their own, or in some hospital occasionally by helicopters. And then they will be, uh, they will be sent to the triage station where our nurse will triage them to uh, five categories. And this is the waiting area. You can see that on the left side of the photo, there's a designated isolated area for fever patients. This is, will be in use in times of uh, epidemics. Um, this is the consultation room. Basically, we have uh, quite a few equipments in the consultation room that we usually use, the stethoscope, the otoscope, etc. And this is the area where we keep our cat-free patients or those who are non-ambulatory. That means those who can walk, who cannot, uh, who are at bed bound, etc. And this is the resuscitation room in uh, the NE. Uh, you may notice that on the right hand side of the photo, uh, this area, there are some bags over there, which I presume our colleagues from the Taiwan Hospital may not see in uh, Prince of Wales Hospital. Those are actually some escort kits mm -hmm. because Tien Shui Hospital is a medium-sized hospital mm -hmm. and it is still not in full function. So we may sometimes need to escort some uh, patient in critical condition to the uh, larger centers. So there's an escort kit which may contain some of the 
medication or equipments that we might need to use during the transfer uh, process. And we have a negative pressure room. You can see the negative pressure room is barred by a, uh, by a door with the glasses. You can see over this, the glasses is radiation proofed. So we can take an x-ray inside the, inside the room uh, without our medical police being exposed to the radiation. This is the treatment room. We can do some minor OTs in our A&E department, like some simple suturing or incision and drainage for some simple abscess, etc. And we have an observation award uh, in a and &E. I think the observation ward in, in our Hong Kong a and &E is much, much smaller than that in Taiwan because we actually keep our patient only for a much shorter period of time. So what we can do in a and &E in Hong Kong? For investigation, uh, sometimes we do some blood tests. Blood test results usually come back in like two hours time. For some tests like uh, ammonia, like Panadol, etc., they might take a little bit longer. But if we really need the blood result in critical condition, we may contact the laboratory for faster results. We may do urine tests, we can do x-ray, CTs, bedside ultrasounds. But mainly for CT scan, we only do the plain CT brain. Uh, sometimes, rarely, we do the CT uh, CT arteriogram for the brain. Sometimes we do the CT abdomen and pelvis, but only in rare condition or in trauma condition. We can do fiber optics, which I think is uh, much similar to the pen endoscopy in Taiwan. So for treatment, we can do minor OTs. We can do TPAs for MI for ischemic stroke. We can do much invasive procedure. What we seldom or rarely do in Hong Kong is we almost seldom do MRI. Even with in patients in trauma, we sometimes send the patient to the orthopedic ward before they can get an MRI appointment. And I personally never see anyone doing number country in our year. Although this uh, in in theory is possible. And we never do ERCPs. And of course, we never do surgery on the GA. For admission right, uh, it actually varies across different hospitals. In the hospital that I'm working in, uh, or actually in most hospitals in Hong Kong, the emergency doctor has the right to admit patient to the ward. So uh, they do not have to listen to the, to the doctors from the medical, from the surgery, whether we can admit the patient or not. But the general rule is that the junior doctors may need endorsement from the senior doctors before they uh, can admit the cases to the wards. Or in some critical patient, discharge also need endorsement from the seniors. So how about the workload of doctors? We work an uh, eight-hour shift, which uh, is different from Taiwan 12-hour shift. So we work much shorter. And we have a protected one-hour meal time. Our working hours is uh, around 44 hours per week, uh, more or less 44 hours. And so we, when we calculate, we are working like 200 hours per month. That correlates to like 23 or 24 days per month. Depending on the patient severity, we're seeing like 20 to 40 patients per shift. So uh, here is some statistics from the hospital that I have been working in. And these are two regional hospitals in Hong Kong. One is the Tumun Hospital, and one is the Pokhoi Hospital. Tumun Hospital has actually the most attendance uh, in the A&E department in Hong Kong. 
and is a regional trauma center. While Pocket Hospital is a medium-sized hospital and does not have all the specialties in the hospital, etc. Uh, for example, they do not have Pocket Hospital do not have uh, obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, it do not have pediatrics. So daily attendance is like 475 for Timun and 296 for Pokhon. This graph shows the, the, the number of patients according to time of visit. We can see that the patient in Hong Kong like to visit the AME in daytime, especially in the morning <laughs> from 8 to 11. And this data uh, shows similar result, whether it is a trauma center or a regional center. For triage category, we can see that the majority of our patient is uh, CAT 4 or CAT 5. There's around 60% that belongs to this CAT 4 or CAT 5 group, <coughs> while the remaining four, less than 40 is the more uh, urgent patients. And a large difference between uh, Hong Kong and Taiwan is that we have a much longer waiting time for CAT4 and CAT5 patients. Actually, uh, for this two center, it is not the longest in Hong Kong. <laughs> Some center has much longer waiting time. So I think the patients of Hong Kong, the patients of Hong Kong patient. <laughs> <laughs> How about the consultation to admission time? Uh, we do not have uh, a very big admission block or official admission block in uh, the two hospitals that I've been working in. So uh, by observation, most admission cases usually arrive at the wards in less than eight hours. So they, they do not have to wait in the A&E department for over 24 hours before they can be admitted. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you.